Psylocke. <coughs> what the fuck was Psylocke doing in this movie? Nothing. What was her point? She cut a car in half with the silver sword of triumph. She looks really cool in her little skimpy outfit, I guess. I mean, not cool, but sexy. But let's talk about her, her outfit. So, you have this awesome scene where Apocalypse is changing the molecular structure of, 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 of the ether of reality to create awesome uniforms for all of his horsemen. Magneto has badass armor. The angel has amazing techno, like, metallo organic wings that can fire feathers from somewhere that then grow back from Feather somewhere. Dark spears. Whatever. Um, you know, so, so like he, he 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 enhances and gives his you know his, his soldiers all this, and then for for Psylocke she gets a bathing suit and then a stronger fire sword. Her fire sword gets a little bit more spitty. I mean, kind of like like from, yeah. from the lightsaber uh, to Kylo, Kylo Ren's, Ren's lightsaber. Yeah. <coughs> um, but no, really, honestly, she doesn't do much of anything. Yeah. And she's supposed to be, like, a prominent, very, very crazy... She's a very interesting character. She's she got has a, a backstory. She does. She can do a lot. She's one of the most powerful telekinetics in the entire, like, like yeah. X-Men universe. Like, can give Jean Grey a little bit of a A little bit of run for her money, right? okay? Um, and, and they, 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 they have her be a glorified bodyguard for Caliban, which, yay for fan service for Caliban, but come on. You're gonna have Psylocke be a bodyguard for Caliban, and then she literally wanders off frame at the end. Yeah. Her exit from the movie is looking, and then just kind of vaguely wandering off. Yeah, and they were like, well, our budget's done for you. We still have a few more special effects to keep in the film, so if you could just exit right whenever you feel it appropriate, and action. It looked like Olivia Munn just got bored. <laughs> and she was just like, what am I doing? It agent, really where's my agent? Right. And she just leaves. I'll be in my trailer. And and that's, I, I get it, because that's what her character was given, was nothing. nothing. Um... Which, again, is just lazy writing. It's totally lazy writing. I mean, I, I, I didn't hate Sansa as much as I thought that I, I would. Did so, you, so you just her. Yes. Just until the Sansa. end when they, they basically they, they made the, the, the reveal and the Phoenix Ex Machina. Um, it, it looked like she was just basically having a rough period. Like, I'm sorry, like... Well, and there was no change in, like, her physical appearance. Her eyes didn't go black, like... There was no, like, like shadowing of what the Phoenix Force is. This is a, a an intergalactic, like, like, force entity that is coming through her, she okay? She is a goddess, like, She's channeling an actual entity here. Yeah, that's... Cosmic. Yeah, and in the in the X-Men movies, they're, they're afraid of that, and so they go... Well, yeah, it's just, it's some weird aspect of her mind, that she's just super powerful, and... She finally lets it go. And when she lets it go, it looks like a bird. Well, and that's why I say boo on you, Brian Singer, for this, because you You're had no two... better. Sh Listen, low battery, I don't have time for your notifications. It, you have two shots to fucking... Two shots to do it right. And you basically said you were going to try to reprieve the Phoenix storyline from the atrocity that it was in the last X-Men movies. You did such good work with, with, with Days of Future Past erasing The Last Stand, okay? Yeah, we erased The I'm Last Stand! Sorry about it! Oops, you are <sighs> So now we can start over. But you didn't. Can... Like, instead of her bursting from the water at the very end before the credits, you just had this, like, bird of fire explode from her chest. And, like... They, there were hints during the movie that she was going through some sort of change or needed to harness this power that she didn't know about. But all the hints in the movie all made it seem like it could have just been the fact that she was sensing Apocalypse. Yeah. That she was just, like, psychic enough to deal with the fact that he was a really powerful yeah. guy on the psychic plane. But it never dealt with her hearing it. No. It never dealt with what was really happening to her. It always seemed like it was, it was Apocalypse. Yeah. At least to me. Um... And so you, you, again, a missed opportunity, which was one of many missed opportunities in, in these movies. Like, it, it, it's, a, it's a theme that I'm seeing, other than Deadpool. Deadpool was awesome. Deadpool was ridiculously perfect. Um, 
And we haven't talked about that in any of our shows. Yeah, so we'll need like... a whole video for that, um, where I could geek about Deadpool for quite some time. Um, but, for this one, um, but aside from Deadpool, the Fox and, and uh, DC have are falling completely behind Marvel in the, the movie universes. They all have these grand schemes of these interconnected universes, True. but they're, they aren't earning them. They all think they can jump on Marvel's bandwagon, but they are not earning the places that each of these characters have. Well, they're not earning them because they're not taking their time. Like, they released this pretty good Superman reboot, and then just force us into this giant spectacle of crazy that was Batman vs. Superman. Props to Ben Affleck for being an awesome Batman, but other than that, I was like, I don't understand what just happened. Like, how did Superman turn into this? And yeah, why? why is Lex Luthor acting like the Joker? And perhaps it'll it'll explain a little bit more of that in like the, the new extended like edition, you know, the three hour cut that's gonna come out on Blu-ray. I and, hope so. But like but the, the, the movie that they gave us in in the theaters was just a straight up incomplete movie. It was, oh, it it was, was a broken mess. It was a broken mess and it was an editing disaster which it just didn't make sense. Yeah. And then you have, you know, X Men Apocalypse which, like, I mean, again, had some great moments, but was, you came away feeling, wow, that was uh, just a, a bag of missed opportunities that, that, that we yeah. were just hit in the face with. Um, you have Fan Force Stick, which, you know, oh. most discerning people still haven't even seen because it was that bad! Because, like... He made me, I will, I will bust toss you, and I'm glad, I'm grateful that I actually watched it just to see the conventions of this movie. But yeah, the Fantastic Four reboot was just every kind of wrong turn you could possibly it not was, want in a movie. Like, it was comedically bad. Like, was, at one point you yes. started just laughing, like when, when scenes would end in the middle of the scene. And, it was and the music on. would just stop and change. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it, and it shows that they had no idea what to do with those characters, what to do with that plot. Nope, we're still recording. All right. Um, they were just like, oh, we'll, we'll make a movie. And, and if, we, if we have the Fantastic Four, it'll, it'll be great. Um, but they just missed the mark. Like, that, there's no other way to say it. There's no need to pull it, tear it apart. They just, that movie just missed the mark. Yeah. It didn't make any sense. Like, what was Slinky Suit, like, like hmm. Dr. Stretch doing? Like, what the fuck was that? Like... That's not what happened. It didn't, didn't even have a three stru like three uh, act structure. It was all no. lead up. It was zero like like middle, and then it, the most unsatisfying conclusion that I mean ha has ever occurred outside of like a really bad porn. Yeah, like, and the way they all changed, like that 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 made no sense. Like I don't. It, it, it was just bad. Why was the thing embedded in rock? Yeah, where did the rocks come from? Where did the fire come from? Did he grow stalagmites? Like, yeah. It's ridiculous. Like, where's the mass come from? Like, <laughs> and then Kate Mara's hair turning blonde or brunette, depending on whether it's the massive reshoots or whether it's the original. Like, it's just yeah. Like you they, can definitely tell that they were like, "Well, this is shit. We need to go back and do something about it." But, and then you look at what Marvel does, and they take something like Ant Man, which again. You have to turn off your brain and just stop saying, okay, I, I, I need to forget that physics are a thing. But once you do, it's there's an incredible movie awesome. around it. Awesome. It's great. And because there's an incredible movie around it, you forgive those things. You do, because there are just all these amazing moments that you're wonderfully embracing. It's, it's just so cool. Like That movie is so witty, and the, com the comedy, and just the way everything is timed, it's perfect. It's Much so better smarmy. than it should be. Yeah. Like, Much better. Straight up. And it, it was, it's just a joy to behold. And everything that Marvel does is a joy to behold. It, like, people didn't like Age of, uh, uh, Age of Ultron as much as they liked the first Avengers. And it's objectively not as good of a movie. But it was still an awesome ride. But it was still amazing compared oh, yeah. to everything else that wasn't the Avengers 1. You know? <laughs> like, 
it, like everything that they do is fantastic and then you have DC just like tripping over themselves every time they turn around it's because they want to catch up and they want to be that same empire but right now and you just can't have instant gratification when you do that because if, if we recall Iron Man really kind of is the basis like that really started the Marvel Universe into and I mean that was in the, the cinematic first, universe yeah, yeah, yeah that was the first studio movie Marvel did if I'm not correct or if I'm correct right their first like Comic yes, that that, that was that, that was them as their own uh, movie studio. Yeah. yeah, and like they built their empire up from there, and everything that had been screwed up in the past, they were like, "Oops, we're sorry. Here's a really really awesome version of what you had to put yourself through before." And it just they, they spare no expense. Thank you, John Hammond. <laughs> but they don't like they hire they're, talented filmmakers. And they, they give amazing them, writers. Oh man. And they give them the ability to tell their stories. Yeah. And you know, I I I understand that there's a, there's gotta be a lot of studio interference, you know, with any kind of project like this. Oh yeah. But it seems so much more that the Marvel, uh, in the MCU specifically, um, really gives their filmmakers more more chance and more freedom to play and to and make to show their art. Like, yeah. Every Marvel movie is distinct and has its own flavor. You know, you've got a heist movie. You, you know, you've got your yeah. your, your, your epic. You know, like like popcorn flick. You, you, I mean, hell, it, you you have everything that you need. You have a space opera. You, you do have a space opera. A space opera, and it's so fucking cool that they can be that diverse. And yet, every single movie has moments where you literally can see that they pulled a frame right out of the comic book and recreated it. Yeah. But made it, like, so relevant and so modernized and so awesome. Because they're never shackled to the comic books. No. They just use them, and they, they take advantage of all of the amazing story and visuals that there have been in 50, 75, 100 years of, of comic comics. books. Because you, could, it would be stupid to follow all the storylines of the comic books because you, you would never finish. But you can pick bits and pieces here and say, I'm going to take this moment and I'm going to take this over here, and you craft an amazing story. Winter Soldier, very, very different from the comic book. Very different. Very different from the comic book. That's so awesome. But they took such great little pieces yeah, of it and so characterizations good. and moments, and they managed to craft an incredible '70s like spy thriller movie. Yeah. That just happened to be set in a, in a superhero universe. And and who would have thought that Captain America would be an awesome character? I hate Captain America from the comic books. Like, all right, I did, you know, as a child. He was the Boy Scout, a very uninteresting person to me. Yeah, it was just so normal. But then, like, <laughs> but now through through these movies and through, you know, silly Chris Evans, the Canadian, uh, and, and his, his hey, portrayal. He's pretty good. He's amazing! Like, he, the, 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 these Marvel people have made me care about Captain America. Yeah, because he has an agenda. Movie. He has, like, a passion. He has a movement that he, like, fights for. Like, they've given you all of this backstory. And then they full-on give you, like, Agent Carter on TV. So you get to really, you get to see, like, where she went. Like, and that's amazing because you care about her in the movie, but she stops. Like, her storyline stops when he freezes himself. Yeah. And so they carry that on, and then they bring that back in Winter Soldier, and you get to see her at an older age, and then... Um, oh, in Civil War, yeah. Yeah, in you Civil War, what? you get to see that whole, like, brink and that whole arc. You get to see, like, I mean, spoiler alert, three, two, one. He outlives like... her. Yeah. She fucking dies. Like, the love of his life dies. And, and the last to... connection he has to his world, He's other era. than Bucky. Yeah. And so that they... They give you the motivation that, that why he's willing to go to such lengths for Bucky. It's not just that he's his friend. It's that Bucky is the last hold that, that Steve has to a world that he understands. And so him fighting Iron Man, you get it. There's there's a reason for, for them to fight. There's a reason for this, this conflict to take place much more than Lex Luthor wants to see a gladiatorial yeah. fight. Or he has some weird, semi-unexplained plan to take out Superman with Batman. 